It's Youth Group Live! With Daniel Bricker. Presentando a Pastor Chad, featuring Pastor Chad. Welcome back to another week of Youth Group Live. We are excited to be with you yet again for another week. We've got a ton of great stuff coming up. Hey guys, my name's Pastor Carl. This is my good friend, Pastor Daniel. And uh, like he said, welcome back to Youth Group Live. We're so excited to have you tonight. It's a special night. Yeah. We have a missionary friend from the DR here today. His name is Chad Nelson. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about his personal ministry and uh, a little bit about what Speed the Life has done for him. Uh, and what Speed the Light does for uh, ministries across the uh, across the nations, um, and so he's going to launch our Speed the Light initiative. Um, he's going to tell us a little bit about it this week, and then next week we're going to launch it. Sorry about that. What else do we have on the docket tonight? A ton of good stuff. Listen, you guys don't want to miss uh, what we have tonight. We've got games. We've got giveaways. We've got Chad Nelson. Uh, we've got a message. We've got all, all sorts of stuff going on tonight. So we're so glad that you guys are part of it. Now, if you remember from last week, uh, we got our, our Snack Madness down to uh, our final, final four. four. Yes, and final us, four. Yeah, so so uh, Aaron's ready uh, to go to tell us a little bit more about, uh, about how we get it down to the final one tonight. Like he said, yes, we are down to the final four of Quarantine Snack Madness. And tonight we are going to determine what the winner is going to be for the round of 16. And I'm just really excited about this because snacking is close to my heart. Uh, so close that there's a couple layers of fat that needs to, you know, kind of disappear from all the snacks that I have consumed over the years. But with that said, we want you to be involved in this process. What's going to happen is we all are going to take our turns to defend a specific snack. So Daniel, he is going to defend goldfish. We have Carl, he's going to defend chips and salsa. We got Pastor Mike, he's going to do Lay's chips and I'm going to be doing ice cream. So we want you to be involved. Uh, we're going to take a minute each to back our snack, but you are going to help determine the winner by texting the word snacks, S-N-A-C-K-S. It's going to be on the screen. Snacks to 22333. We want you to be involved, and you are going to just uh, text the number that is associated with each type of snack so I, I think that's pretty simple what do you guys think yeah I think that pretty much settles it we've we've gone from 16 to 8 to our final four um, these are good snacks guys it's quite it's, a journey like, yeah it's it's gonna be we've come a long way it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a, a fight to the finish I'm I'm kind of sad that we're concluding it because I uh, just seems like two weeks ago we started this you know yeah it was only two weeks ago it's sad it's yeah sad, really. well with that said I mean Seems like you're doing a lot of talking as well, hey, besides look, the host right now. Listen, so I came prepared. I why came don't prepared. you Why don't you lead us? Are you guys cool if Daniel leads us in uh, defending why goldfish yeah, might be we'll the best snack? We'll get the worst ones out of the way first, and then. I like that. Yeah. See, I I thought the first one was the best one. That's why it went first. I don't know. It? Go ahead. Give hey, us listen. Your thing, man. So I, mean, I I don't really need to defend goldfish. We just need to talk about like why the other snacks aren't as good. Uh, ice cream melts. 
Lay's is like too good of a name brand. Like Lay's acts like uh, chips and salsa just <laughs> fell over. How dare so you? So I mean, like over before gold, it began. <laughs> goldfish. The tagline is literally the snack that smiles back. I don't see ice cream or Lay's or chips and salsa smiling at you. It's literally called the snack that smiles back. They come in cheddar, pizza, uh, all kinds of flavors. Like, wh why are we even having a debate? That that would be my question. I don't even need a minute. Goldfish is clearly the winner. You people can make your decision at home. First of all, they're masking the flavor of cardboard. Second of all, Abraham Lincoln once said that if you're a racist, I will attack you with the North. And this being a, a, a cultural snack, to say that you don't like it or that another snack is superior is, aren't you is, Puerto Rican? is to Venezuelan. I'm sorry. Three, two fifteenths Venezuelan is to say that you think other snacks are su superior. And so... And chips and salsa, first of all, salsa, it's a tomato, which is a vegetable or a fruit, I don't know. It's healthy for you. Seems and this like is you're made a little out of corn. Seems like you're a little confused about the it's, very product that you're supposed of, to defend. It's made out of corn. And I don't want to interrupt, but I haven't heard one like good thing about it yet. You it's just delicious. It Sounds really it's disappointing. It's not yeah. bad for you yeah. is what I'm saying. So we can move on to, to Mike's snack? It's what fuel. Whatever. Give him 10 more seconds yeah, because he did a horrible job seconds. with the first 50. Yes. Yeah. If you don't like these, you're a communist. Mm. Again, so we just want to in, a, in a formal debate that would stand. Week. This is his last week, yeah, and it, it's uh, been fun. No, nah, I'm fun. kidding. I, I don't know why we're bringing politics into this. I, I didn't think we were going that deep. This it is a time. It felt like the primary debates. Okay. Well, listen. I'm just going to tell you, chips and salsa are pretty good. I mean, we can all pretty agree good. on that. Pretty good. They're pretty good, but they're just not the good you know what i mean the best good the goodest so, let me just tell you <laughs> no that would be improper english there uh carl but let me just tell you a few reasons and i even jotted them down <laughs> just so that you can remember i can frame this, this man we were allowed to have notes he check this out prepared. bro check this out so lays lays is the number one snack and all of you out there j that are fully on agreeing with me go ahead and put in the number lays and then text it to two two three 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 right now because they're the clearly the winner and this is why not only is our our special guests favorite snack not your time lays. carl it's not your, your time, time. all right it's special uh, chad nelson our missionary in house right now pastor chad nelson his favorite snack is Lay's okay so number one we have that but uh, number two it says right on the bag and you can you can uh, clarify this for me it says the classic snack right so they are the classic pastor Aaron's taking my notes so I can't say anything man oh, here you go here you go here I'm you just go. kidding you're good um, so they're they're already classic right so they are the best snack they are the cheapest snack and uh, oh yeah I have this I wanted to prove it to you it's this cheap is the good. receipt it's cheap good this is the receipt yeah because uh, we are all youth ministry students here, you know, and, and uh, we understand that we don't all have tons and tons of money. So cheap is good in this uh, special thing. It says on the bag, no right, artificial flavors, preservatives, no MSG. I this isn't a message. Free. This yeah, is this is not a message, you. okay? We I'm telling you. I could, you'll be preaching in two weeks. I think, all right, Aaron, tell us about ice cream because... Okay, well, hopefully I can do this without Carl interrupting because he's been very rude, unlike all of us. If we need us. him to leave the state, we can ask But him you know what? I don't want to spend time talking about other products because it's not about them it's about ice cream and so I want to ask anybody out there maybe let's get this camera on me right now <sighs> when you had a good little league game where did mama and papa bring you after that game to get ice cream Home. when they took out bin Laden what do you think they did immediately after that moment they ate ice cream when the president of the United States is sworn in what do they eat during their first meal that's right, yet again, ice cream. I have a longer list than this, but I think you're getting the point that ice cream, whether it's in a home with just mama, papa, and little Timmy, or all the way to the highest points of the presidency, I want you to understand from young to old, from poor to rich, ice cream is what attracts the crowd and i also want to make one more thing clear time is up uh, nope mike went over <laughs> no. and you have been very disrespectful <laughs> to bringing politics into this i want you to know that in these uncertain times that we're in there's a little jingle that takes place and it's the ice cream man coming throughout the neighborhoods to bring hope and cheer to a world that really is lacking it. So uh, also, one last thing, what's the one food that can't contract the coronavirus? <laughs> you heard it, ice cream. I don't know that any, we didn't professionally fact uh, check these, but I don't know that any of those facts were like confirmed real. 
Yeah. We have no choice but to believe you. Yep. But if you're lying, Wikipedia. To, if you're lying to the good people of Youth Group Live. They're going to call you on it. Would you rather me lie or call everybody a communist? I mean, let's be <laughs> yeah, honest. Well, that's, I think that was, I think we were down Six to Six to one there. We buddy. were down to three snacks from the beginning. I think he's just upset that Bernie Sanders pulled out, you know? Mm. So Are anyways, with that said. Are you calling me a uh, communist? Not a show. This is yeah. not a political so show. So with that said, um, I, I don't want to throw Carl under the bus. We want you to be involved with this vote. Absolutely. So we're asking that you please text the late. word snacks to the number Two two three three three, but don't forget that the most important number is number four or one. Okay, it's goldfish. You know what else? Is another important number is three. serving size. So let's talk about that. Just I know my minute. I only well. use fifty five <laughs> seconds, so I just want to say a serving, a good serving of goldfish is fifty. Fifty pieces, fifty goldfish. Mm. I mean, what other snack can you sit down and eat fifty of in one sitting and feel okay about it? Um, that's a good point. Yeah. Not the best point. So number one for goldfish. Text the number yeah, one. Yeah. Last for word, goldfish. Carl. Last word from you. And then yeah. Mike and myself. You guys are just gonna cut me off out of spite, right? Don't worry if, about if this. Is how two. fifty, go ahead, 50 goldfish. If this is how you're gonna use your chips? last. Fifty goldfish or three chips. Three, three two, one. Three, it's over. Three go restaurant ahead, style. The last thing I have to say is lactose intolerant has nothing on Lay's. Yeah. So well, ice cream but cardiac cheese. arrest does. Okay, my, my last thing is this. What do you use to make a milkshake? Ice cream. But you can't make it on its own. You just mm. But it is the base. That's fair. It's the core. It's the essence. We'll let you people at home decide. Listen, yeah. there are four great snacks, and you've probably been eating all of them during quarantine. So which one is your favorite? One, two, three, or four. Text that number to 22333. Three, three. That's how we find out. That's how we settle it. That's and if you are Spanish, cuatro. All right, Mike, why don't you take us away? I appreciate Oops. you guys all defending your snacks. You guys all did wonderful, uh, absolutely. But, uh, you know, sometimes while we're eating snacks at home, we can eat a little bit too much. And that really stems from all of us being at home too much during this quarantine uh, pandemic. And when you sit at home late at night, early in the morning, afternoon, dinner time, you start to get lonely. You absolutely do. And I'll tell you what, tell you what. You may be looking for your next FaceTime, your next Zoom crush, whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Been because there. you're lonely. But before you make your me next mix mistake, we're going to help you out. We want you to watch this next Carl video. Hi, you little chicken nuggets. I have some dating advice for y'all. And since I'm single as ever, <laughs> I'm literally the most qualified person to give some dating advice. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay then, communicate everything. Don't expect them to be something they ain't. If they disrespect you, leave. Apologies go a long way. So say you're sorry. Sorry. 99% of the time, the only difference between being good friends and dating someone is physical touch. My suggestion would be to master the side hug before moving on to the full hug. Wait to say I love you. When you think it's the right time, it's probably not. Wait a little longer. Because once you say I love you, you can't take it back. Trust me. And last but not least, if you're dating a person and they're pressuring you to do something that you're not okay with, my suggestion would be to karate chop them in the face and then run away. It works really good. No one likes to be chopped in the face. No one. All right. That was my advice for all you knuckleheads in a current relationship. If I were to give my real advice, I urge all of y'all to be single. Because being single is cool beans, y'all. Think of all the groovy people out there that accomplish so much by being single rather than being in a relationship. For example, Sir Isaac Newton. He's the guy that discovered that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The Wright brothers were single, and they were too busy flying over all the lame couples. So what I'm saying is that if you're single, you can literally fly. Probably. <laughs> and Beethoven, the guy that literally invented music. And after hearing of those cool single people, and you're still like, Carl, my dude, I dig the dating game. Being single is whack. Well, I counter that argument with this. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, heard of him? He was super single. Game, set, ma match point. Single people.
Welcome back to Youth Group Live, guys. My name is Pastor Carl. I'm so excited to have you here with me tonight. Listen, up next, we would like to in, uh, introduce our guest for the night. Uh, he and his family have been missionaries to the Dominican Republic now for 12 years. He's probably the coolest guy I know. Everywhere he goes, he exudes masculinity, but he, he speaks in such a way that it's like Kenny G's jazz music just right out of his mouth. It's like taking melatonin and eating ice cream, I mean chips and salsa at the same time. Uh, he's everybody's favorite missionary. He's Chad Nelson. Chad Nelson, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us. Hey, thanks for letting me yeah. come tonight. Oh, boy. I'm so excited that you're here with us, man. Um, you know, it's interesting events since you've been home. When did you, when did you come back from the DR? We've actually been home since last June. Last traveling. June, okay. So I imagine you've kind of been delayed a little because of this, this COVID thing. Yep, and yeah. they say we probably won't go back home until September. Yeah. That really, that, I'm going to be honest with you, that absolutely stinks. Um, but it's, it's good for me because I get to spend more time with you. Uh, in addition to this, uh, I heard some, some pretty crazy stuff has happened since you came here. I, I heard through the grapevine that you're pregnant. Not so much me, more my wife. Your wife is pregnant. That's yeah. insane. That is, how did that happen? I mean, when did that happen? Well, we discovered that she was pregnant and she is having a baby on Monday. Discovered in, in, in oh, this Monday. As in, it yes, happened that five quickly. Days. Yeah, it's a quick. That is so crazy. Uh, and your wife's name is Terry, correct? That's correct. And you already have another daughter. Her name is, is Emma. Is She's, Emma. How old is Emma? She's 10, yeah. almost 11. Awesome. They're an awesome family. Um, well, congratulations on the baby, on Thank your wife you having the baby. Much. Again, yeah. that you are not. She's doing you're most not, of the yes. work. You are not giving birth to the baby. Correct. correct. That is correct. Um, man, I'm so excited for you. You'll have to send us photos of the baby once the baby has arrived. Um, That's in the plan. Yes, listen. Hey, before we get into it, I just thought it would be fun to play a little Would You Rather questions uh, with you to get, get to know you just okay. a little bit. Okay. Uh, so if they make you uncomfortable, I apologize. Are you no, ready for you this? Don't. <clears throat> no, you would don't. you rather be, no, you're right, I don't apologize. Would you rather be a reverse centaur or a reverse merman? That's like a mermaid, but the male version. Absolutely a reverse centaur. There's something more manly about that than the merman. A horse Everybody head. Everybody assumes that you're yeah, a girl. That's and you're true. constantly fighting to be the non-mermaid. Yeah. I'll be the centaur. Okay. Uh, I've just got an image of it. And, um, bro, you've got to shave your legs or something. Cause, it's amazing. Know, it's a majestic animal with some hairy legs. I kind of have we the go. image in my head, too. Uh, would you rather only ever use one ply toilet paper... Or have to use your sock as, uh, let's see, as a paper towel for cleaning up liquids and immediately have to put them back on your feet? I hate wet feet. <sighs> That's a tough it one. It is, right? But one ply toilet That's paper. That's one ply toilet yeah. paper. However, uh -huh. going to be honest, yeah. I've used one ply. It's and I've used some stuff that's probably worse than one ply. Yeah. So I think I'd rather deal with that. And whatever that takes to get around it, then deal uh, with wet socks. As opposed to wet oh, socks. I hate wet socks. Yeah. Well, ever since the toilet paper crisis, I've just, I've just hooked up a hose. I have a really long hose at my house. And it goes up. I'm, never mind. All right. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Duck-sized horses? Yes. Absolutely. I would not want to face a horse-sized duck. You know, sometimes the birds, like geese and stuff, yeah, when they get angry, yeah, they, do, they yeah. scare me at their size. Can uh -huh. you imagine a, that duck the size of a horse? No, thank you. Something about their bill, right? It, it is. Yeah. It's all in the bill. Yeah, and they, they poop well, I will everywhere. It's uh -huh. true. All right, okay. So, would you rather smell out of your ears or hear out of your nose? This is a good one. This is a, I think I like this one a lot. Absolutely hear out of my nose. What happens if you got a clogged it's, nose or a runny yeah, nose? Yeah, but... Do you just be double the smells? Do you really want to smell twice as much as you do now? Do I, I smell? Don't think is so. this a secret way of I, I should be chewing so. gum? I, one nose is plenty. I don't need two of them. I smell okay. Just okay. saying. All right. <clears throat> I think this is... Nope. All right. Oh, this is the last one. Are you ready for this? This of is a course. good one. Would you rather clog the toilet while visiting the White House? Like presidential invitation. Like a president invited you okay. and you clog the toilet. Okay. Or accidentally sneeze on the Pope. Pope invitation. I'm going I would rather clog the toilet at the White House. Can you, somehow, can you explain that? Somehow, if you sneeze on the Pope, it's probably on camera somewhere. 
And so the rest of the world is watching as you do this. And I live in a Catholic nation in the Dominican. So I'd be living with that for a long time. At least you could kind of hide if you've just clogged the toilet at the White House. Do you really want to go there? Just out of curiosity, before we continue with this, who would you blame it on? Please don't say Pence. (laughs) Who would you blame it on? Who would I blame it on? On my daughter. That's why we have kids. So we can blame them for stuff. The world has opened up to me. Thank you so much. It never occurred to me. I don't have that in me to blame someone else. (laughs) But but I'm sure as my daughter grows up, I'll I'll have that great opportunity to just, I was. I hope so. Yeah. To clog some toilets and blame it on my child. Thank you for that. Yeah. How many Hail Marys would you have to say if you did sneeze on the Pope out of curiosity? 743. That many. Boy, is the Pope ever Catholic. All right, so um, let's, let's get past that real quick, guys. Uh, so you've been home since, you said, last June or July, correct? June. June, okay. And you're doing something called itinerating, right? Correct. Can you tell me a little bit about, because I Googled it, misspelled yeah, it. Yeah. It's not yeah. a dog race in okay. Alaska. Okay, no. Yeah. I get so t- tell yeah. me a little bit about what itinerating is. Well, to, as missionaries, we live in the Dominican Republic, and we serve the people of the Dominican Republic, but we're, the p- churches and families and businesses all pay donate so that we can go do that. And so every four or five years, we have to come home and talk to them and say, will you agree to do this for another few years for us? This is what we're doing. And so we're back home talking to people, telling them what God has done and saying, will you help us keep doing it? That's very much a ministry of the heart. In fact, several years ago, I think about three years ago, you, you uh, interim youth pastor at my church, and I got to serve underneath you. 2015. And 2015. I'm old, guys. And, uh, oh boy, am I old. And, and I got to experience uh, serving under somebody like yourself who just, who, who has a heart for his ministry and understands the sacrifices necessary for that. And so it's so awesome for me to see that your, your ministry in the DR is no different. Um, and that it's, it's fueled by people uh, who have the same heart. Uh, it's a ministry of the heart. It's a ministry of sacrifice. And that's absolutely beautiful. So you guys have been, uh, so we're segueing into Speed the Light. You guys have been blessed by Speed the Light in the past. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Speed the Light's role in your ministry in specific? Sure. What we do in the Dominican Republic, the Dominicans are amazing people. And then we've been partnering with a whole lot of amazing people there in the Dominican to serve. And one of our main focuses is with schools. And we partner with 16 schools. There's 6,000 kids in those schools. That's more than 5,000. That's more than 5,000. And so we try to help them in every way we can. Speed the Light has got us a box truck. This box That's truck awesome. has helped us bring five containers of food all across the island. It's helped us deliver 6,000 water filters all across the island. We also have a work truck, which is like a, like a Toyota, that we take and do construction projects. Wow. We've been helping build churches and schools so, so that hundreds of more kids can be a part of it. We also, one of the biggest things, we have a van that we use for teams that come. A lot of times teams come and help us do ministry. In the last f- four years, we had 29 teams come. Mission serve, trip opportunity. And we drag them around in this speed the light van everywhere we go. Oh. It's amazing. But probably the most important one right now is because the electricity in the Dominican is so sketchy, we have to have a generator everywhere we go. And that generator was bought by Speed the Light. And we go everywhere with a sound system, portable sound system. And so we've done hundreds of presentations of the gospel in every corner of school, of ball field, of city street, that you can imagine speaking to thousands of kids and families, all with the voice of Speed the Light behind it. That's absolutely awesome to know that you don't only meet spiritual needs, you're also meeting physical needs like, like food, you're, missing, you're uh, ministering to educational needs, something that's, that's um, repressed all throughout the world. Uh, you're meeting, especially with Terry, which I know that your wife has such a big implement with, uh, um, with education across the DR, uh, and you're ministering to the students about Jesus as well and, 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 uh, and getting some transformation through that. And Speed the Light has enabled you to do that through all these, these tools and resources. Um, and so we're, we're just about to transition to Mike and Aaron into one of our games for tonight called called Match That. Um, so I'm going to transition to him in a minute, but uh, Chad and I are going to be back later tonight to talk a little bit more, uh, talk a little bit more about what Speed the Light does for uh, the ministries across the world and how we as students can support ministers and uh, missionaries like Chad, Terry, and his daughter, Emma. So let's go ahead and take it away, Aaron. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Chad and Pastor Carl. I know that Speed the Light is an incredible ministry, and just seeing how God is using the Nelsons is really incredible. They are 
literally traveling all over the nation from the West Coast to the East Coast to try to raise funds. So we are all about supporting missionaries like the Nelson family. And you're going to hear more like Pastor Carl said here in a few moments about how you can be involved with this incredible ministry. But before we do that, we want to have one more game before we get in tonight's talk on uh, uh, that Pastor Daniel has for us. Uh, so I want to encourage everybody, all right, students, get involved with this game. We actually played it last week, but let's just be honest, not many people played it. So this week, I am challenging you to step it up. Uh, we are going to put on the screen two different pictures. The junior hires will be uh, trying to replicate the picture on the left, and then the senior hires will try to replicate the picture on the right. You have three minutes in order to accomplish this task. Make sure that you send in your picture to the number that will appear on the screen. So hopefully you all understand it. I think it's pretty easy, and we really think that this is a great game. So take advantage of it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. Best of luck to all of you. That number is 717-454-2625. You have two minutes and now 49 seconds. We hope to see you here in a few moments. All right, we are at one minute, 42 seconds left. Remember, send that picture, 717-454-2625. Man, what an incredible opportunity to bring your parents in, your brother, your sister, or even somebody else, even an animal with that picture on the right side for the senior hires. You got a minute, 24 seconds left. All right, we are at 45 seconds. Maybe your animal is not working with you properly if you're a senior high student. So go ahead and grab that brother or your sister, or maybe even your parent. Put them in your arms. I mean, just hold them, let, like, just hold them like, like you would little, little patches or whatever your animal might be. You gotta fake it till you make it. You got 26 seconds left. All right, we got 10 seconds left. Get those pictures in, 717-454-2625. We're gonna go live with Daniel here in three, two, and one. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's exciting to be with you. Listen, if y'all didn't jump on that train with the pictures, those are some good portraits to recreate. If you're not, if you're not getting in on that game, you're missing out. You miss a great opportunity to incorporate not only a sibling or a parent, if you're a junior high student, or an animal for the senior highs. We picked these especially for you, so make sure you get those pictures in. Listen, last week we got into the first week of our new series called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. Carl talked to us about how God can turn our biggest curses into our greatest blessings, and I think it's ironic that our series is called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do because I don't know about you, but right now there's not a lot to do. Right? Our restaurants aren't open, the coffee shop, school, everything's kind of closed right now, 
So it's a little more difficult to get out and do things. And I think the one thing that we are doing a lot more of is using our cell phones. Am I right? We're burning through so much more uh, data. We're streaming so much more than ever before. Uh, there's a lot more FaceTime calls, Instagram, TikToks, texting, you name it. It is increasing. If you've seen the numbers on uh, hours of Netflix streamed in the past week, uh, it is incredible. There, there's some big numbers. But I bet you there are some of you watching that are mass emoji users. Now, let's talk about emojis for a second. There, there are three places to fall on this spectrum. Okay, there's, there's like the normal person, like I use like one or two emojis like in a text and that's like normal, okay? Let's talk about those people that aren't using emoji, emojis at all. Um, why are you not would be my question to you. And then even more importantly, let's talk about those people that have to use like 10 or 20 emojis in a single text, right? Like you're sending like 10 cry emojis for a joke that was not even funny. Okay, we don't, we don't need those kind of people, but we all have our favorite emojis, okay? If you're watching live right now, what we want you to do is comment your favorite emoji. Um, everyone's got their favorite, whether you admit it or not. My, my top three, I thought of a top three. My, my number one is like the laugh cry emoji because it's good for so many situations. You don't need like a ha ha or an LOL. You just throw in that cry emoji, same thing, right? The second one is the clapping hands emoji. I love that one just because it says like, hey, you did a good job, like that was good, very well said without typing a bunch of words. And the last one is the gritting teeth emoji. I love using this one because this one says either I said something embarrassing you said something embarrassing, but either way, let's move the conversation in a new direction, right? But I think if there was an emoji that kind of resonates with all of us over the last two weeks, it's that shocked face emoji, right? The one that has just wide eyes and a mouth wide open because this emoji, emoji basically says, I have no words, right? Which if we're being honest, that's kind of how we've all felt the last few weeks with everything that's happening in our world. Usually this emoji is, is going out whenever it's something is so shocking, we just have no words to say, or quite frankly, don't know what to do. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. Have, have you guys ever experienced something in your life that made you feel that way? That, that feeling of, I literally have no idea what to do next. A situation that came out of nowhere right, that caught you off guard and quite possibly changed your entire life forever. If you haven't experienced that yet, um, those things do happen, right? We live in a broken and sinful world and those situations do come our way whether we like it or not. These situations that catch us by surprise and they can change our life forever. We know things, uh, little things like that happen, right? Like you thought you aced a test and it was all good only to get it back a week later to find out that you bombed it. Um, I feel like all, all the students, like we've all been there, we're like, yeah, I got that, and then all of a sudden, no, I do not have that at all. That's a bad time. Or that, that boy or girl that we like, that we thought was very much into us, that like, oh, things are going good, and then like two weeks later, we find out, oh, they're definitely into my best friend. That's a bad situation, right? Um, or we get into to just more... Uh, kind of deep life situations, like maybe, maybe our parents sit us down and tell us that are, they're getting a divorce, right? We live in a, in a world where broken families are a very real thing. We lose a, a close friend or a family member that passes away. Um, the, the list could go on, but I think you all get what I'm saying. And the thing about these moments is we never know how we're going to respond, right? When, when these things catch us off guard and we have no idea what to do, sometimes we surprise ourselves by how well we handle it, right? We think like, oh, this is going to crush me. I'm never going to recover from this, right? We think that's how it's going to be. And come to find out like weeks or months down the road, we're like, I did kind of okay with that, right? Um, or sometimes we surprise ourselves and we think that we're going to be just fine and it totally crushes us, right? We get to a point where we're like, I got this, only to find out um, after like sitting in our room alone for like two weeks straight and not putting on real clothes, I do not have the situation at all, right? Sometimes we feel closer to God when these situations happen. Sometimes we, uh, instead of, of running from God, we run closer to him. We, we dive deeper into, into him, into his presence. And other times we go the opposite way and we totally run from the Lord in the situations. We're, we're all wired differently. There's no like formula for how this works or how we'll respond. But the truth is that when life hurts us, and it will, we're part of a sinful fallen world is that life hurts us sometimes, we all find ourselves wondering what to do next. And that's why we're jumping into this series called What to Do 
when you don't know what to do. So tonight, as, as Pastor Carl talked to us last week, we're going to jump back into the story of Joseph. And let me set the scene for you by telling you that Joseph had a lot of family drama. All right. This was not just like, oh, Joseph and his family, all things are good. Joseph had some drama to deal with. Uh, he played a part in creating some of his own drama. Um, shout out to all the siblings that are out there like causing drama for their, their families. We, we know what you're doing. We know what you know, right? He, Joseph was his dad's favorite, okay? He was given special treatment compared to all of his brothers. Uh, anyone else out there, the favorite child? Uh, I'm my mom's favorite child. She just won't admit it publicly yet. Uh, that's a shout out to my mom. She is uh, definitely probably watching because all of our moms watch the show. Um, but on top of that, Joseph has this dream, right? And how many of you have ever had a dream that you tell someone about and like instantly they crush it, right? We all know the dream crushers of the world and you never want to tell anything to that person because the first thing they say is like, well, why are you even talking about that, right? They may feel stupid. Um, so, so Joseph has this dream, right? And basically the essence of the dream is, hey, my, my dad, my family, all my, my brothers, they're all bowing down to me. And you can imagine how well this went over. Imagine going to your siblings and saying, hey, I had a dream where like in the future you were worshiping me. That's not going to go over real well for any of us. And it certainly didn't go well for Joseph. His brothers definitely weren't okay with him sharing his dreams of, hey, I'm going to rule over you someday, right? So here's how the story picks up. It says this in Genesis 37, starts in verse 18. It says, they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer. They said to each other, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Now, this went from zero to 100 really fast. This wasn't just like, oh, I don't really like my sibling. This is like, I hate my brother and I want to kill him. That's, I mean, pretty serious if we're being honest, right? Now, despite all of the anger towards Joseph, his, one of his brothers has like a sane moment here. And it says, it says, when Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So Reuben has like a sane moment here, right? Thank goodness for him. He convinces his brothers to just throw Joseph into a well instead of going all homicidal and killing him. Uh, he even planned to come back and rescue Joseph later. That's a good brother right there, right? We all need a brother like Reuben who's like, oh, let's just throw him in a well for a little bit and then secretly I'll come back and get him, right? The brothers listened to Reuben and so when Joseph approached, they ripped off his coat that his father had given him. And they threw him in a well, but they're still not done with him at this point, right? So after this, they see this caravan of traders approaching. Judah, who's another one of Joseph's brothers, suggests they come up with a new plan. Hey, let's sell him to the traders, because that's better than throwing him in a hole where he could fall down and, and, and get out, right? Let's sell him to these traders, and that way we don't have to murder him. His blood's not on our hands, right? So that's exactly what they do. So they dip Joseph's coat into the blood of a wild animal. They take it to their father, and they tell him that Joseph was likely killed by some wild animal, right? This is a good cover story for his brothers, right? Let's just take him back. Um, so then the passage goes on to say this. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. Now, that last line may seem unimportant to you, but if we read it again, it says, examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. This is interesting because we see the hatred in Joseph's brother's hearts at this point. Because they don't say, hey, dad, look at this robe and see if it's Joseph's robe. No, they don't even say, examine this to see if it's our brother's robe. They say, examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. And I think that tells us a lot about how Joseph's brothers felt about him. We, we can't begin to understand that hatred that they felt in their hearts to not even say their brother's name. They said, examine it to see if it's your son's robe. The other thing that we can't really understand here is how Joseph's feeling in this, in this situation, right? He's betrayed by his own brothers. His own family sold him into slavery. And the message that being, was being sent to Joseph was pretty loud and clear. We're better off without you. We're better off without you. That had to be a hard moment for Joseph. To be sold out and, and abandoned by his own family. Right? This is clearly for Joseph a moment where he doesn't know what to do. 
Now our stories are different than Joseph's, right? But we all experience pain and suffering and, and brokenness of some kind. We all have scary, painful, or dangerous moments that catch us off guard. And we all have moments where life just doesn't seem to make sense and we don't have the words to process what's happening. Now, unfortunately for Joseph, he had more shocking moments in the future, right? And we'll look at some of those as the weeks go, go on in this series. But I want to highlight tonight five powerful words that show up in this story, right? And while these words didn't keep Joseph from getting thrown into a pit or sold into slavery or change his family situation, these words made all the difference and help Joseph, I think, more than anything else. And the words are found just two chapters later in Genesis 39, 2. It's these five words. It's the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. Now, Joseph didn't have a lot going for him in the pit or even afterwards, right, when he sold into slavery. But when Joseph was in despair, he's wandering through life, he could rely on this single truth, God is with me. The, the truth, that truth that God was with him did not change his situation, but he knew that he wasn't alone. This truth didn't mean that Joseph could see where the story was going, but he knew that he wasn't entirely dependent on himself to get out of the situation. This truth that God was with him didn't mean that he had a reason or an explanation for all the pain in his life, but it meant that he didn't have to figure it out on his own. And the same is true for you and me tonight. In Joshua 1.9, it says, this is my command, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So just like Joseph and the Lord was with him, we hang on to that same promise that God's with us wherever we go, which gives us tonight's big idea. And that's when there's nothing you can do, God is still with you. When there's nothing you can do, God is still with you. When life hands you shocking news, and you just don't know what to do, God is with you. And we hear that all the time, and it's become one of those cliches of, oh, God is with you, he'll be with you in whatever you do, right? And, and we almost get kind of numb to hearing that, right? Those words kind of lose their meaning a little bit. But think about it for a second. God is with you. God is with you. He's, he's present near to us, next to us, any time that we feel alone. Anytime we feel like, hey, they abandoned me. Hey, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's coming next in my life. But we can rest on the promise that God is with us. And when we start to understand and embrace this truth, it changes things. Our circumstances may not change. And that's something we have to remember. It, Joseph wasn't immediately returned to his family, right? He wasn't like, oh, I'm in slavery and now God get me out of this. I'm back where I belong, right? But it changes our perspective on the situation. And maybe more than anything, it gives us hope that we can keep going even on those days when we feel like we can't. I think we all have those days where it's like, God, I don't know if I can do this again. I don't know if I can take one more step. Knowing that God is with us may not always change our circumstances, but if we allow it to, if we allow it to, it will change us. It's easy to give in to the hurt that we've experienced. It's, it's easy to let fear overwhelm us or anger consume us. We have a lot of reasons to let difficult and sometimes unfair situations get the last word in our life. Guys, the humbling truth is that life isn't fair. Um, and that's a hard one to deal with sometimes because I think that, that sometimes we get this idea in our head that, that following God brings with it this, this precedence that everything's going to work out for me. And that's just not the case. We live in a sinful, broken world and unfair things do still happen to us whether we're serving God or not. But when we know that God is with us, the uncertainty of life doesn't get the last word God does, right? Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. So what can we do about it, right? There's no easy answers for getting through shocking or uncertain or hard times, but here are some things that I think are important that we can do in the meantime. Number one is be real, okay? And what I mean by that is, is feel your feelings. And I think a lot of times we go to one or two extremes, right, with our emotions. So emotions can be terrible, terrible leaders, but they are good followers, right? And, and I think sometimes we let our emotions lead us, 
We let our emotions take the, the reins of our life, and, and we just live via our emotions. That's dangerous, okay? It's good to feel your feelings. It's bad to let them lead you. The other thing, and I think all the guys out there will agree with me, the other extreme that we go with this is we take our emotions, and we tend to just kind of shove them down into some deep recess of our stomach and pretend they're not there and refuse to deal with them. Also dangerous, right? All throughout the Bible, we see people going through difficult circumstances and, and difficult situations, and there are many accounts of them being real and honest with God. Listen, Jesus felt the emotions that you feel. I know it's hard to believe that like, oh God, you don't know how I feel in this situation. I promise you he does, okay? I promise you he does, and our job isn't to just suck it up and act like everything's okay and just put on a smile and, and pretend that, that life is good when it's not, but we should know that God is more than okay with our honest questions, our doubts, and our fears. Okay, God can handle it. So when you go into that time of, of prayer, that time of talking to God, know you can be raw and real with God. It's okay. He can handle it. So feel your feelings. Be real with your emotions. Number two is remind yourself and each other that God is with you, okay? Here's a little spoiler alert for you, um, and we'll get into it in the coming weeks, but Joseph's story eventually turns around, right? Things eventually look a little better. We have the advantage because we can just skip a few chapters in the book, right, and see like, oh, okay, Joseph's doing all right now. Things aren't that bad. But in the middle of that, Joseph had no idea that things were going to work out. Joseph's still living in slavery. Joseph's still being sold out by his own family. He doesn't know how it's going to end, right? And sometimes that gets hard for us in life to, to understand and believe that, like, we don't know how it's going to turn out, and that's okay, right? But remind yourself that God's with you. Your story's not over yet. We want to jump to the end of our own story sometimes. Trust me, I get it. We just want to know in the end, hey, is it going to work out? right? But we don't, we're not afforded that luxury. Otherwise, we wouldn't need faith. We wouldn't need to lean into Jesus. Be real with your feelings. Remind yourself that God is with you. And, and number three, and I think this one's most important for all of us right now, and that's press into the presence of God. Press into the presence of God. Listen, we are all spending a lot more time in our rooms these days, a lot more times. So don't waste that time. Don't waste that time. God's presence isn't just inside of a church building or in a worship service or with 100 or 200 or 500 people gathered around you. God's presence is always with us. We just have to press into that. It's in reading his word. It's in talking to him in prayer. It's, it's listening to things that edify our spirits. Press into God's presence. Listen, I know that, that it's tempting to just binge on Netflix and eat a bunch of like dumb foods right now and just kind of sit around and like FaceTime your friends. And that's important. Like we need to unplug sometimes and just kind of like let our brains rest. But don't let this, this time in our, in our country, in our world, don't look back on it and think, man, I didn't do anything with that time. You can invest your time or you can waste it. The choice is ultimately up to you. Invest your time wisely. This is an opportunity where sports are gone, right? All of our favorite places that we normally go on the weekends are gone. This is a great opportunity to press into the presence of God, but it's up to us to decide that we want to take advantage of that. Our lives will be full of moments where the world seems to be crashing around us and we have no clue uh, what the next day or month, or year is going to bring. That's part, of how, that's part of how our lives work. We don't know what's coming next. And that can be really scary, or it can be a great opportunity for us to trust in the presence of God and, and remind ourselves that God is with us. His word promises us in Deuteronomy 3.16 that he will never fail or abandon us. And this time, th this is a truth that I think a lot of us have a, a problem with believing, because on this earth, we're used to people failing and abandoning, abandoning us, whether it's our friends, whether it's our own families. But when someone says, I'm not going to leave you or abandon you or fail you, that's hard for us, I think, as humans to, to believe sometimes. But what God promises in his word that he's not going to leave us or fail us, we can rest in that promise. Even at times where you can't see the ending or you don't know what's coming next, God is always with you. God is always with you. Let me pray for us this evening. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that even though we can't see the end of the story or the next day or month or year, we trust in you. We know that you walk through life with us. And God, as we resist the temptation to run out ahead of you and try to figure things out, 
as we resist the temptation to sit back and just let life pass us by, as we choose to walk step in step with you, we know that you go with us. We know that you protect us. We know that you keep us safe. And no matter how bad our circumstances seem, we know that you're there in the middle of that with us. We know that you have a plan for our lives and we just have to lean in and trust in that. God, I pray that you help us not waste this time that we have. We love you, Jesus, and we're so thankful for who you are and everything that you're doing in all of our lives. We pray for our country. We, we pray for our world. God, and we just ask you to continue to move in a way that only you can. We love you, Jesus, and ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you for, uh, for welcoming us in your home as, as Youth Group Live. We have uh, some giveaways. We got some game updates from uh, Pastor Mike and Pastor Aaron. So we're going to kick it back to them, and we'll see you guys in just a minute. Boy, do we have some giveaways, Pastor yeah. Aaron. I'm excited. We got some winners. We're finally uh, nailed down that and uh, got your got your texts, got your pictures. So thank you, thank you, thank you for sending those kind of things in. Man, Pastor Daniel did an awesome, phenomenal job, and uh, we're just thankful for him. Uh, but hey, let's get to this yeah. uh, thing. We let's got the final four snack madness that we have narrowed down now, yeah. and we are about to crown the champion, yeah. the reigning number one top snack of your quarantine life. And so uh, let's get to it. But first, let's maybe start with number four. Okay, yeah. And fourth place. Last okay, place. so last place, last place, fourth place for this whole thing. Man, sorry, Goldfish. You get that spot. So kind of runner up there, you know, not too exciting. Nobody really likes Goldfish anyway. I don't yeah. think. I don't, anyway. But uh, anyway, so that's that's fourth place. Uh, for third place, you may you may not you know really guess what this might be. But uh, for third place, it's actually a tie. A tie. A tie. A tie okay. with second place. So second and third place, same thing. And that is Lay's and chips and salsa. All right. So, so Lay's and chips and salsa. So Pastor Aaron, that's why I've asked you to come here and okay. be here with me because as the crowning reigning number yep. one champ in snack. It's your yeah. snack, man. You know, I this powerful moment for my life. I, I never saw myself on this stage. Soak but, it in. Uh, I just want to thank everybody out there for voting for ice cream. I don't make ice cream. All I did was defend it, but we did this together. So uh, take a bowl and take a spoon and let's do this and dine together as we celebrate the victory that yeah. is ice cream. Um, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, not look at myself too much at the side here because I tried to trim out my sideburns and I was laughing a little bit because I, I clipped a little too much off the side up of my ears and it looked really bad. So I'm trying to maintain now uh, we're gonna look a, a, a straight look into the camera. This quarantine's affecting everybody. I but I want to highlight we had our game match that and yeah. we had a few that we want to highlight and there's gonna be a champion uh, in the very end as well. The first submission that we have. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, the submission came from a leader in somebody oh. in this room. Uh, so let's put the first image up. On the very left, we have Matt and Alyssa Oliphant. I mean, beautiful picture right there. That, that's something that you want to put on a Christmas card. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to go bulk and just say, hey, this is going to be our picture for the next five years. I, I don't want to determine their future, but I love the picture. And then on the right, yeah, right. we have a, uh, a crazy looking dog. It looks absolutely terrifying. It needs a haircut. It needs a haircut, it needs a bath, it needs a lot of things. And probably the same could be said about the person that it's, uh, that's yeah, in the picture with the puppy. Too, I guess. But I will say that uh, he did a great job with that picture. Um, and I would just give that dog a, a huge kudos as well because they are looking to the side and mm. it looks like this was a moment that it has been living for for quite some time. So uh, best of luck, maybe uh, hopefully it's got some more doggy years in, in it. But unfortunately that's not the crowning champion. This is the picture we are looking for tonight as the victor. And as you can see on the left, I mean, what detail went into that? And I will confirm that that uh, picture was created within three minutes. So those are real life people. Uh, I haven't seen anything that beautiful uh, other than the actual pictures we- Art school material. Art, art school, actual pictures we've seen from Noah's Ark. I mean, that's how great it looks. Uh, it's just beautiful. So congratulations to the one on the left. And then on the right, I mean, it's not a live animal, but stuffed animal, totally, totally allowed. Kind of looks uh, like that dog though. I would say it looks like the dog, maybe a healthier version, I'd say. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But I gave the, the 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 championship belt to this one because you got the headband up top. I mean, uh, looks like she's looking at the correct angle as the original picture. The neck. And um, yeah, I mean, it just looks incredible. So congratulations to these two. We are so proud of you. And once this quarantine thing is over, uh, perhaps you have a future in modeling. I, I don't know. <laughs> that would be I, awesome. I, I'm not an agent, but I'm willing to be an agent. Let's mm. put it that way. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I gotta say with the games. Do you yeah. have anything else? Yeah, I'll tell you what. I mean, it was phenomenal. Thank you for your submissions. Thank you for uh, sending all those kind of things in and, and participating. We appreciate it very much. Um, but right now, uh, we're actually going to bring back up to stage our missionary and pastor Chad Nelson. Uh, but before we do, yeah. what we'd like to do is actually show you this promo video um, of this uh, this missions kind of giving group that you're very well aware of, that you already know, and if you've been to any sort of youth group in the past century, you are fully aware of it. But it is Speed the Light, and you actually have an opportunity to to give, not on a weekly basis, not on a um, not in your own youth groups, but actually with this challenge that we're going to be coming up to. Yeah, um, it's it's going to be awesome. So let's let's shoot to this promo and uh, look at Speed the Light. This is Tim. Tim works as a missionary in a remote part of the world. These are the people that Tim is working to reach. If Tim doesn't have the tools needed, he can't tell them about Jesus and their eternity will be affected. What is the solution to this problem that you can help with? It's simple, money. You use it to buy food, movie tickets, and clothes. You get what you need and what you want with this tiny piece of paper. It can empower or control. But what if the money you earned did something more? All around the world, there are people who need to know about Jesus. And, as Christians, we know it is our responsibility to tell them. You have the power to make an eternal impact. When you give this piece of paper to Speed the Light, it can help Tim reach the unreached and bring light to darkness. You see, when you choose to share this tiny piece of paper that you could use to buy movie tickets, food, or clothes, your generosity and compassion can literally rewrite someone's story with the gospel. This small sacrifice on our side of the world translates into something huge. Respond to the love of God within you as He compels you to action. You have the opportunity. It's time to be the difference. Souls saved and lives changed. Speed the light. Welcome back, guys. Uh, just real quick, I forgot that uh, while I was doing my interview with you, Chad, that uh, our ministries got together and we wanted to bless you since your wife will be giving birth here very shortly. Um, we, we got together and we, we, we had a $100 budget. We spent $80 on the check because it cost a lot to print them up. So we, we wanted to make this with you. It's not entirely accurate. I don't use a lot of checks because I'm a millennial. And um, so I had to... But that I stimulus had, check... Oh, that's true. My bank has been stimulated recently. Yes, and Dwight. so the numbers at the bottom are actually my routing number. It's not coming out of my bank account. So please don't take this to the bank. But we did get you and, uh, and Terry a little gift card, um, which I will be sure to give you later. Like uh, the doll we just hairs. Wanted, yes, that's thank nice. you so much. What is. 100 what, doll hairs. Is that not how it's spelled? It's accurate. Carl, have you ever written a check before? My wife does. He's too that worried about the communists, yeah. <laughs> which they take their money. So. Am I wrong to but worry you, about that? You said that is, your, that is your bank account number at the bottom. So this you, is, uh, yeah. Uh, pause, take a screenshot of your screen right now, and that's yeah. Carl, K A R L yeah. Stennett. Yeah. I don't know how much is in there, but he did say it's. And my bank social account. security number is get ready, guys. Get a pen out. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put that back there. Thank we'll you be guys. sure to send you home with that. Um, we just, we, anyways. That was more for a gag, but we love you and we wanted to bless you and send you away with something for, for taking the time away for your family just to be with us tonight. But hey, let's, let's talk Speed the Light real quick. So we know that Speed the Light, um, is it, it gives opportunities to ministries around the world. Uh, and we know what that does uh, for, for you. Can you tell us a little bit about how Speed the Light presents ministry opportunities for students? And I think this is what we want to, just for a little perspective, yeah. right now they say there's almost 7.7 .7 billion people on the earth. And 3.19 of them have never heard the name of Jesus yet. Wow. That is why Speed the Light does what Speed the Light does. Because there's so many that still don't know, that haven't heard. Right now what Speed the Light is doing, they're still traveling in certain parts of the, co of the world with cars bought by Speed the Light. But a lot is radio 
It's television cameras. It's internet stuff. The, the actual way to communicate that you're doing tonight, they're doing all over the globe using equipment paid for by Speed the Light. And that's incredible. Man, that's absolutely awesome. So that's a worldwide thing. Guys, did we, did, by chance, did we get any of the students uh, to text in questions? Yeah, we got some questions, but I, as we're focusing on something serious right now, I would say that some of them aren't so serious. So I would, uh, I would hold off on some of those questions until a few moments from now. But uh, I would ask, uh, how, like, how has Speed of Light directly impacted your family? Like, do they give you a, a cheap car? Do they give you something that will last for a year? What, what does that look like? Great question. Um, in the Dominican Republic, we live in the capital. There's a city of about 3 million people. The roads are okay. They're not terrible. But as we travel throughout, we're driving through sugarcane fields. We're driving on dirt roads. We're crossing water on rocks. We're doing everything. So we actually, our own family drives a 4 by 4 pickup truck paid for by Speed the Light. We can access any place. And every now and then I do have to kick it into 4x4, four four, but normally no. So yeah, Speed the Light has been amazingly good to my family. That's pretty incredible. You guys got any questions uh, Speed the Light related for Pastor Chad? What's one, of the, what's one of the biggest things that you feel like uh, Speed the Light, not just, but, not just providing vehicles, but other, is there other support that Speed the Light uh, like brings for you guys while you're down there? Yeah, for us, probably the most effective thing has been that portable sound system. You know, not long ago, before we came home, we found ourselves in Pedernales, which is a little town right off the Haiti-Dominican border. They're side by side. And it's a middle of nowhere town. And we drove an hour from that little middle of nowhere town up on the mountain. And it's gravel, it's dirt, and we get up there, and there's hundreds of kids. Mm -hmm. And how do you communicate with them? So we bring out our sound system and our generator bought for by Life for the Lost, and we start playing it in Spanish, and then we realize half these kids are Haitian. They don't even speak Spanish. So we popped in a bunch of Creole, Haitian Creole as well. So we're literally ministering to hundreds of kids in the middle of nowhere in two different languages, all because Speed the Light vehicles and Speed the Light generator and sound system let us do it. It's amazing. That's, That's pretty incredible. incredible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're there because there's an incredible need. A lot of people uh, have never heard of the name of Jesus, right. but also a lot of people are growing up with a Catholic background, and you're trying to show them uh, the better way, which is uh, Jesus and, right. and have a relationship with each other and community and, and all those things. So uh, it's really incredible what you guys have been doing. And the fact that you've been there for 12 years is absolutely incredible. Um, but there's one thing I know about the Dominican Republic, yeah. and that is that it's a big baseball country, huge baseball country. Absolutely. So I want to ask you personally, who well, is the greatest Dominican Republic player oh, that's dangerous. of all time in baseball. Dangerous. Exclude Current or? All time. All time. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is on the internet forever, by the way. I know. Careful. For all my Dominican friends, Careful. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to go. I'll say Juan Marichal. Okay. Because he was the very first Dominican to make the Hall of Fame. Okay, very cool. Pitcher for the Giants way back in the yeah. day. Yeah. But you probably would accept Pedro Martinez, David Ortiz, oh my just to name a few. Absolutely. Okay. And Vladdy just got in the Hall of Fame too. So, but Pedro, yes. Pedro, they, David from Ortiz. From their years from the Red Sox. Yeah. Yes. All right. You're really pushing Ortiz. No, no, no. I just wanted people to know that he's the, from the DR. And the Red Sox have. Yeah. Have and taken the Red Sox. Yeah. Some well, great players. I don't want to take up too much more time, but one of the questions that I do want to highlight is that uh, when you put a fresh roll of toilet paper. Uh, on the little, the little bar. Yeah. Does the toilet paper go over or under? Over. Okay. Just cool. that was a really big <laughs> question okay. on the internet. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. So, anyways, with that said, we actually had Aaron Pittman text Vladimir, so he Vladdy, must be a big, big Vladdy. Go. But we wanna, we actually just wanna conclude with, with one thing. Really, we wanna encourage students. Um, that this conversation with Speed the Light, it doesn't end tonight. In fact, we're going to talk to you next week about an opportunity that we have to give even right now in this season that we're in. Although we're not in our actual buildings, 
uh, giving and showing up to the youth group, we still are called to give towards missions. And so next week, you're going to be hearing a little bit more about Speed the Light. Um, but we are so thankful that Pastor Chad has been able to be with us tonight. But we don't want to leave him hanging, right? No, we, can't, we can't just go out on got to do something. Yeah. You know, it, it's a time of mourning, right? There's going to be a time of rejoicing at some point. Right so now. true. So true. But, you know, I, I found that music has always been very helpful, why don't you say, Carl, to get us through seasons? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are you trying to think up? I was, I was going to sing yes, okay. but I was deciding what genre to sing it in. Okay. Well, with that said, <laughs> I will say that uh, somebody that does not leave their emotions off of the pages is Taylor Swift, right? I mean, every yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. A journal entry. And there's a really important book of the Bible called Lamentations. It's a book of mourning. And so... We actually want to put Chad up against the internet to do a game called Taylor Swift or Lamentations. So what's going to happen is there's just going to be a one-liner on the screen. And Pastor Chad, you're going to have to tell us, is that from the book of Lamentations or is this from a song from Taylor Swift? So uh, it's going to be on the screen. You're going to type this in your so answer on the chat. And the first person that responds out of all our accounts, that's going to lock in the answer for everybody else, okay? So choose uh, wisely. If choose gonna, wisely. If you're going to if you're going to make a guess, you're going up against chat. So I'm not in a hurry, or I am. This is a race. Uh, no, it it's a race. It's a race for them, not so much for you. Okay. Yeah. Are you up on but your T-Swift? I, well, I am Erickson. not up on my Tay Tay. That's good. Everyone that Dystology. you get wrong you have to apply a different shade of lipstick worn by okay. Taylor Swift on okay. her 2016 tour. That would have been awesome. That's Too really bad we didn't think. That's a really yeah. weird story. Okay. Yeah. So, I all right. That with that said, either. what's going to happen is we're going to throw the image up on the screen, and I'm going to read it out loud to Pastor Chad, and you're okay. going to have to decide. And okay. maybe we could take turns on this, okay? So here we go. There's no phone a friend. There's no phone a friend, okay. but here's the first one. She cries herself to sleep at night, tears soaking her pillow. Is that T Swift or is that Lamentations? This futon, though. In this case, I'm going with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift or Lamentations? The correct answer, unfortunately, is not. It is Lamentations <laughs> One Two Missionary. So no Come way. on. Come on. What translation? Seriously. What Bible do you preach from? I'm kidding. I'm is just that the message. Yeah. Uh, all right, so, so we, we got more. We definitely yeah. got more. So the I'm next thinking. one is going to be this. Oh, man. It says, "Your knives and swords are weapons that you use against me." Knives and swords. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make the case. It, it's up to you. It's up to you. Wow, your knives, knives and, and swords, swords are weapons that you use against me. Again, I do not remember that in Lamentations, Knives and Swords. So I'm going with Taylor Swift. You're going with Taylor Swift? All right. I, it is Taylor Swift. It is Taylor oh, Swift. Yeah, so congratulations. Nice. We, had, we had a few Lamentations there. So it's a tie, it's a tie ball game, 1-1 one, one right okay, now. Okay. So you're all, right. all right. You're hanging in there. Why don't you go next, Pastor Mike? All right. You ready, okay. Pastor Chad? Yeah. Here we go. I think so. It says, my eyes are blind with tears. My stomach mm. is in a knot. That's, That's powerful. That could easily be either. That got me to the altar. <laughs> My eyes are blind with tears. My stomach is in a knot. You know what? I think I'm going with Taylor again. Mm, somebody's a Swifty. Ooh. No. The correct answer is Lamentations 211. And oh. the internet has spoken, and they went for T-Swift. Well. So we're still in a tie. Wow. As well. What a, what a <laughs> moment right now. I, I don't know, maybe we might want to just like take a quarantine season where we focus on the Bible, I right? I think so. Read or Taylor Swift. Pa Pastor Carl, why don't you over go next? The last one didn't rhyme, which was my okay. hint. Yeah, that was okay. my hint. That's good. You were like a lion ready to pounce. Oh, goodness. These Ooh, are so ready advised. to pounce. Is that Song of Solomon? I think that's you about like Taylor. Lion ready what was that to pounce. actor that she dated? You're like a lion ready to <laughs> pounce. I think it gets so, a the actor uh, from Twilight that turned into a, a werewolf. I said well, him. I, I'll say Lamentations this time. Lamentations. All right. We got Lamentations well 310. Well done. What did the internet say? The internet there, again, Lamentations. So we're still tied up. It's still tied up. So we're gonna have to we got a 2-2. Two -two. Let's go to the next one. Here we go. Uh, this yearning in the deep part of my heart for you. I don't know. Is that grammatically? Yeah, I'm definitely going Taylor on this one. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Okay. Here we go. 
ain't, ain't nothing, nothing about you. you. And that would oh, explain that the favorite. whole the yeah, whole if line. That's not, a, if that's not a like pre country song. Ain't nothing about you. That sounds like my love notes I used to share like <laughs> last year. So uh, I was I was thinking they got my own personal love letters. <laughs> All right. Did they get your diary? Uh, we got a. We got we got a three two lead for Pastor Chad. Oh, they come on now. they so, answered with lamentations. Come on now. All right, so you're up. So the next one is I'll never forget the trouble, the poison I've swallowed. I'm going Taylor again. Taylor Swift again. I'm going right. Taylor again. All right. Lamentations Whoa. 319. What Listen, poison did we need to cut whatever content we have for the next three weeks? Yeah. We're going through lamentations. Yeah. Pastor Chad, this when he brutal. goes back to the DR, the first six I months know. are going to be like an expository Lamentation. message on lamentations. On lamentations. Yeah. Well, I hate to say it, but the internet got it correct. So oh, no kidding. Congrats. So when you we got we, to do lamentations. Yeah, yeah. We got a couple more. Why don't you go, Pastor Mike? All right. Here we go. But there's one thing I remember. So I can keep a grip on hope. Oh, man, that sounds awfully odd. Lamentations, but watch it get me. Lamentations. Lamentations? It is. Lamentations, oh, 321. Right. Somebody knows his Bible. That's right. There you go. Okay, okay. All right, all right, Pastor Carl. I'll, I'll keep track here, but go to the next one. <clears throat> yeah, okay, here we go. I'm aching, no past, nowhere to hide. Gotta be Taylor. Gotta be Taylor. The last <laughs> two. Okay, okay. Wow. Okay. Warming all up right. here. Yeah, you're right. feeling it now. Well, we got a tie, actually. So we got a tie. Uh, it's 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to lie. The longer you sit in this futon, the better it gets. I'm I don't know if I just become a... numb because because of, like, I the pain. It's literally, but you it's just good. become part of the futon. All right, here's the last so. one. All we are is skin and bone. Lamentations. Lamentations? That was tricky. I'm that literally could be either. No. no. Oh. 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 I think wow. I could find that Treacherous. somewhere in Scripture. Pulling out the uh, somewhere in Scripture, but not Taylor Lamentations. Swift, yeah, could be. A secret theologian. Maybe T. Swift was used Lamentations to write her music. That's a, good, that's a good theme. Which one's more depressing? I'm th hopefully Taylor Swift. <laughs> All right. Well, with that said, we actually have a winner. And it's not me. It's not you. It's, oh, no. you listen, you put up a good fight, though. I those were, those it. were difficult. Those yeah. You had more. You had more T Swift answers, and yeah. the internet had more lamentation and answers. Yeah, they just kept going lamentation. That's kind of funny. But in their defense, they could have been looking them up. They could have been looking them up, yeah. but probably not, because no. students never cheat. I'm, I'm okay no, with never. it. Yeah. Well, with that said, I, I think it's time, probably, to go to bed, right? Yeah, I mean, it is like what? Would you say? Time. It's bedtime. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, anybody want to? Send us out. Yeah, so I'll, I'll volunteer. Thank you. If you want to lay hands Honestly, on chat, that's what you commendable. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on yet another adventure on Youth Group Live. We're so excited to be able to share this with you every week. Remember from our word tonight, listen, God's with you. Even when you can't see it, uh, when you don't know what to do, God is with you. So remember that this week. We can't wait to connect with you. Be back here next Wednesday night at 6 p.m. We can't wait to see you. You guys have a good week, and we will see you soon. Go get some ice cream.